WWDC is set to be over two hours this year. We're just a couple days away from the big event, and it's, well, it's already ruined. Yeah, I mean, we kind of know everything, so just jumping right into the McDonald's ball pit that is WWDC, let's first talk about software. I mean, it is the Worldwide Developers Conference, after all. And when it comes to software, the big dog on campus is iOS 17. Which is even funnier, considering this was actually supposed to be the small, boring update. Remember? Remember when we were hearing rumors about that? How this, oh, this was just gonna fix the bugs. Clean it up a little bit. No, no major features or anything like that. At some point, I don't remember when, because time isn't real, that changed. It changed to a bunch of key user-requested features that we're getting in iOS 17. I mean, I'll, I'll take it. I'm not gonna, like, complain about new features, but, you know, I'd rather we just polish the turd a little bit. I'm excited for new features except for this one, this smart display-like thing. We're hearing from German that this is gonna be pretty similar to, like, the nightstand mode on your Apple Watch, except big. I'll take uh, things that nobody wants for a hundred, Alex, thanks. We're also getting such gems as a dedicated journaling app for like, you guessed it, journaling. I guess it's one of their new features based on health and mood. Speaking of health, there will be further additions to the health app that also help you track your mood. Kind of like those mood rings that you would buy in school, like uh, for Christmas and take it home to your mom and be like, here, I I'm a little kid and I'll buy, I buy you a present, mom. And then she's like, oh, thank you. And then she throws it away. It's kind of like that. Now, in my mind, here is the meat of this new iOS 17 we speak of. We're expecting to get expanded dynamic island functions, which is like, yeah, that's I want that a lot. Throw in some more widgets for the home screen, uh, updated control center options with a sliding flashlight brightness thingy. The list goes on. We're going to get improvements to search, wallet, and find my... Oh, and an insane thing to be happening, I guess side loading for apps, but only in Europe. Oh, Europe, you dog. So yeah, uh, expect quite a bit for iOS 17 this year. Uh, some cool stuff, but listen, as we already talked about uh, last week or sometime, uh, we put out an episode talking about what I believe is already the biggest features of iOS 17. They've already been announced in a press release, in a newsroom post, like, weeks ago. Those are official. Apple shared them early. So if you missed it, you want my full opinion on that stuff, link to that episode is down below. Alright, so how about this guy? iPad OS. iPad OS 17 uh, will be bringing us, um, stuff. Most notably, hopefully, an update to what is pretty much god-awful stage manager. Again, uh, this is one of those things that I feel like we kind of got the bulk of already. Obviously, with iPadOS 17, includes the accessibility features that we've talked about that were already announced early, but also uh, Final Cut Pro and Logic Pro were already announced. So that's, I mean, that's kind of all you need for iPadOS this year. I mean, if you watch the show and you know me, then you know my opinion already on iPads. Uh, iPadOS is uh, not great. But I still believe that iPads in general can replace the laptops for most of you. Well, maybe not most of you. You're a bunch of nerds. Uh, most regular people. <laughs> not to be forgotten about, watchOS 10 is uh, going to come on your wrists. So make sure to bring a towel. <laughs> Uh, we actually expect to get some pretty cool stuff here, like an entirely new widget system allowing for detailed scrollable widgets that should show way more information and glances into things like activity tracking, weather, and calendar stuff. Once again, I will accept this. German thinks that the watchOS 10 upgrade will be fairly extensive. <laughs> I'll, sh I'll show you fairly extensive, Mark. Of course, obviously, also expect a new version of macOS, though, uh... We don't know much about that, actually. That's suspicious. That's suspicious. That's weird. Oh, and I'm pretty much just putting this part in here just to prove that I didn't forget or anything. Uh, TVOS is... You know. We're gonna get a new version, but it, it's tvOS, and tvOS does tvOS, and, well, tvOS forever. Alright, we're about halfway through the episode. If you need to grab a snack, a drink, uh, do that, because now... We're going to talk about hardware. We're getting quite a bit, actually. Mark Gurman says to expect Max. Yes, plural. Like a 15-inch MacBook Air. Cool, right? Uh, yeah, I'll, yeah, that's okay. I will still forever and always prefer the 13-inch, but whatever. But even cooler, a new Mac Studio. My all-time favorite Mac. M2 Ultra, here I come, honey! You have all that so far? New Macs. Uh, but unfortunately, those new Macs do not include a new Mac Pro. Uh, that's coming later this year. 
Probably. And of course, lasty but not leasty, let's talk Reality Pro and XROS. This is a game changer and I will fight you to the death if you try to say otherwise. People that aren't like excited about this headset, uh, what is it like to be so wrong? Something about this year just feels different. There's a buzz in the air. Like the buzz you would get from a refreshing Bud Light on a hot summer's day. Uh, before they got canceled, or whatever. I think it feels different this year because Apple knows that we know, bro. And we know that Apple knows that we know. And these teasers are so on the nose, Tim. Are you even trying? Code new worlds? Mm-hmm. A new era? Really, Apple? Not like you didn't already give it all away with the uh, invites having AR, VR, pass-through animations. We are definitely gonna get this headset at WWDC but we are also definitely not gonna be able to buy it. Mass production for this headset doesn't actually start until later this year, like fall. So we're probably looking at a November, December ship date, which is why this thing hasn't fully outright leaked quite yet. Sure, we have renders and concepts, but those are mostly based on this single sketch from the information about four years ago. This is super locked down. So far, we don't know everything about XROS, its dedicated operating system, but the things we do know are exciting. We're expecting a gesture-based hand-controlled UI, no need for a controller, iris scanning for authentication, think iris ID, a standalone app store, an avatar system for FaceTime calling that will hopefully not suck, and what's poised to be a super big deal, the ability to run iPhone and iPad apps on the Reality Pro headset. And that's all well and good, right? But the hardware coming is the real magic here. The Reality Pro headset is just, it's a lot. <laughs> but the main points are that, well, we're expecting this thing to be 3,000 entire doll hairs, money, actual money that you must give. And it's gonna come with so many cameras that your Tesla will be embarrassed. Remember, this Reality Pro headset is meant to facilitate both AR, augmented reality, and VR, virtual reality, both. So yeah, we need trackers everywhere. The rumor is that the cameras and stuff are really well hidden on this device, like barely noticeable. So how they did that, don't, I don't know, witchcraft probably. We're expecting the headset to have insanely high resolution 4K micro OLED displays as well. Uh, like a couple years ago, employees had described this as indistinguishable from reality. Mm, yeah, okay. Also, this thing is supposed to be like crazy lightweight and I'm talking like 100 to 150 grams. Uh, I don't, I don't know if you understand how insane that sounds. For context, the MetaQuest 2 is over 500 grams. They've done so much to make this happen. For the first time, Apple has bent the motherboard inside of this device because of how curvy and thin it is. Pause. There are a lot of firsts here, but things like making sure you hide the cameras so they aren't like readily seen and the thing looks sleek and modern and deciding to make this so thin that you have to bend the motherboard. And there's just certain apple -y things that they are doing here that makes it very apple -y and some of the things to me in my heart feel unnecessary. And if we didn't do some of those things, maybe it wouldn't be $3,000. One uh, weird thing though, is that the Reality Pro headset is supposed to be powered by a waist-mounted battery pack. Mmm, yeah, so here's the thing, I think I might hate that. Sort of like a MagSafe battery pack on your waist uh, that has like a MagSafe cord that goes up to your right temple to plug into the headset, that's just how it works, that's what keeps it so light. But also, I'm conflicted about how I feel about this. You see, this is why I get excited every single year for WWDC, because Apple is prepped to innovate all over our faces! Yes, Tim! Innovate on me, Daddy! I am as disappointed in me as you are. Hey guys, uh, me again. So this is the last episode of Front Page Tech before WWDC, but that also means it's the last episode before my meet and greet June 6th in San Francisco. That's Tuesday. It's right around the corner. Uh, so I'm getting on a plane like literally in a few hours. If you bought a ticket, if you're going, I am so excited to meet you and put a face to the username. Uh, if you don't have a ticket yet and you're kind of feeling like, hey, I'll leave a link to a couple of extra tickets in the description below if you want to like grab one last minute. And for the rest of you, I'll see you a little bit later next week. I love you and uh, enjoy Dub Dub.